now that we've set up some of the notation for this 2A ANOVA, we can actually get into some of the mathematical properties, statistical properties of these different things that we've set up. All right, so we just left off by saying that the total sum of squares equals the sum of squares from A plus the sum of squares from B plus the sum of squares due to error. All right, so that's what we set up. And then now, if we think back to how we did things in one-way ANOVA, we set up those sum of squares, and then we figured out, OK, what is the distribution of each of these components? So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And just like in one-way ANOVA, we're going to see that each of these components is chi-square distributed. All right, so we want to show that sum of squares for A over sigma squared, sum of squares for B over sigma squared, and sum of squares due to error over sigma squared are each independent chi-squared random variables as long as some hypotheses are true. So this is just like we did for the one-way ANOVA. We said we were going to show that these are chi-square distributed as long as the null is true in one-way ANOVA. So in two-way ANOVA, we're testing the means for A and the means for B. So we need to say two sets of hypotheses. So the null for A is that the means among A's different levels are equal. And the null hypothesis for B is the means among B's different levels are equal. So if we want to think of an example, then for the null hypothesis for A, that might be saying, like, the different detergents remove an equal amount of dirt on average. And then the null hypothesis for B would be saying that the different water temperatures remove an equal amount of dirt on average. All right, so those are the hypotheses we're going to work under to show that these different components are chi-squared distributed. All right, so let's go ahead and start from there. We'll assume that H A and HB are true. So if you remember from one-way ANOVA, this total sum of squares is chi-squared distributed, and its degrees of freedom is just the sample size minus one. So remember, we're working in the situation here where we have one observation per combo of detergent and water, or in other words, one observation per combo of each of A's levels and each of B's levels. So the number of levels is A times B. That's the total number of different combos we could have, so that's the sample size. N is A times B, and so our um, degrees of freedom for SS total over sigma squared is AB minus 1. All right, so if we use that theorem that we talked about back in one way ANOVA, then we know that SSA over sigma squared is going to be chi-squared distributed with A minus 1 degrees of freedom. So remember, the degrees of freedom is the number of levels in A minus 1. And then same story for SSB over sigma squared. Again, degrees of freedom is number of levels in B minus 1. All right, so that means that um, this piece over sigma squared is chi-squared distributed. This piece over sigma squared is chi-squared distributed. And this piece over sigma squared is chi-squared distributed. Also, from the theorem we used back in one way NOVA, we know that SSA over sigma squared and SSB over sigma squared are independent. So what that tells us is that since this is chi-squared and this over sigma squared is chi-squared, this over sigma squared is chi-squared, therefore this plus this over sigma squared is also chi-squared distributed. All right, so where that puts us is that this over sigma squared is chi-squared distributed and this piece is also chi-squared distributed. So therefore, if we have chi-squared plus something is a chi-squared, that must mean that then this is also chi-squared distributed. So if we think back to MGFs, that can help you understand that. All right, so SSE over sigma squared must be chi-squared distributed. But what about the degrees of freedom? Well, we know that the degrees of freedom should add, right? Um, so if we know the degrees of freedom for SS total over sigma squared, and we know the degrees of freedom for this chunk over sigma squared, then we know that we can just add these to get there. So the degrees of freedom for SS total over sigma squared is AB minus 1. And then we figured out that the degrees of freedom for this piece over sigma squared is A minus 1 plus B minus 1. So then that leaves the degrees of freedom for SS due to error over sigma squared. And so it must be then the degrees of freedom here is equal to A minus 1 times B minus 1. All right, so now we figured out that 
SS total over sigma squared is chi squared distributed, and SSA over sigma squared is chi squared distributed, SSB over sigma squared is chi squared distributed. These two components are independent of each other, and then finally, SSE over sigma squared is also chi squared distributed, and we have all the degrees of freedom here. So that will help us set up the test statistics in the next video.